Yeah, welcome, Pulte! What's up, guys? Can you guys hear me all right? Yes, yep. yes, we can. How are you doing tonight? Yeah, good. I'm trying to jerry-rig this thing. I'm not uh, in a good spot. Uh, so, sorry, it's kind of screwed up here. Um, sure, sure. It looks like it's like zoomed in on me weirdly, no? <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it does look like that a little bit, yeah. Um, Do you know why that is? Uh, I'm not too sure. I, I think you could maybe try, if you go into your uh, settings there, you might be able to flip the camera and then flip it or maybe turn it off and turn it back on. Yeah, let's see. We're about to break restream. <laughs> Yeah, whatever yeah, you do, it's kind of crazy. It's like all zoomed in on me, kind of. Yeah, weird. yeah, it's a little, it's a little bizarre. Um, wow. So uh, we have. You know, a, if I was some yeah. supermodel, you guys would be fine with it, but. You know, you <laughs> no, that's all right, man. Uh, you look great. Uh, so welcome to the show, man. Uh, we've been uh, trying to get you on for a long time, man. So uh, we're happy to have you today, uh, uh, both you guys, man. So uh, welcome to the show. Uh, so first things first, uh, like I said, we do have Kevin and also uh, uh, Pulte with us as well. Uh, I did want to start uh, with a couple questions, uh, Pulte, if we can, and then we could move on uh, with uh, Kevin Malone as well. Um, but first things first, man, how you doing, Bill? I'm doing great. Thanks Good. guys for having me. I've been trying to get on here for a while. Uh, just saw the tweet today and got to do it. Got to yeah. do it. So. Right on, right uh, I, on. I've, I've watched your show. I like your style. Um, cool. I can, tell you, I can tell you're doing it for the right reasons, so that's that's awesome. Right on. Glad to hear it, man. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, uh, this whole show is always about, you know, community and, and getting people to have a voice, right? So one of the main things we do is we bring on investors. We bring on people who obviously we like talking about Bed Bath Beyond, but we love bringing on people to discuss uh <laughs> Uh, those kinds of topics. And, and, you know, I think it kind of allows people to, to think differently. You know, uh, I think we're getting some, uh, I don't think that's, that's actually me, Carter. Way, yeah. Let me just turn down Carter there. I think my whole thing figured out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, for instance, like the show has always been open format, right? We've always loved bringing people on discussing stocks, you know, because everybody has various, varied opinions, things like that. So, you know, I, I think that's why so many people enjoy it and why it's grown so naturally. You know, we've only been doing the show for about a little over seven months now, and the show's been doing fantastic. You know, a lot of people, a lot of great feedback, things like that. Uh, but but it's interesting to know that you tune in, man. So this isn't your first time that you have uh, uh, perhaps watched the show. No, because I kept having all these people saying, you got to go on the PP show. You got to go on the PP show. <laughs> yeah. What the hell is this thing? And then, <laughs> great on Reddit, you know, on Reddit, you never know what you're going to get. But I, I love the community that you guys have. And then, um, you know, full disclosure, the GME meltdown guys, I don't know if you. Yeah, we run into them all the time. But they're a great contraindicator uh -huh. for like, uh, like they're see the thing that the GME people, GME meltdown people, in my opinion, don't understand is like that like by focusing on destroying people you know it you when you when you do that it it kind of just weighs down your whole psychology and your whole ethos and i think that so i try to look at like what what's the opposite of what they're trying to do so if they're trying to destroy somebody i'm trying to like look at okay well what is that person building what is that person constructing that's good right um and so they're almost like contra indicators. So then when I saw them like picking on you guys, so to speak, and I don't know if you know that, but yeah, you know, like kind of <laughs> guys. yeah, it's some pretty funny shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Actually, they're pretty funny, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, okay, so I hear people keep telling me to go on the PP show and then, and then, uh, and then the GME meltdown. So that was like two out of three. And then I checked out your, your show or whatever. And, and, and you liked it. <laughs> Yeah, well, these days you have to be so careful. I mean, it's just, it's uh, especially being in my area of things where philanthropy, you know, we're doing philanthropy, yeah. and, you know, money to people, you know, actually sending money to people. But there's so many scams out mm -hmm. there and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, I'm delighted to be cool. here. So it looks like a full crew. Yeah, awesome. Um, excellent. Well, uh, um, I did have a couple questions uh, uh, for you if, you, if you don't mind answering them. Now, again, if there's ever a question that you feel like you, you don't want to answer or anything like that, you can ask whatever the hell you want. All right, cool. So my first question is, uh, what's up with only the young, man? I, I got to know what that's all about. 
<laughs> um, well, part of it is Ryan Cutler. Okay. Part of it, uh, um, you know, I think that uh, it's really interesting. It's like, I think that we're at this inflection point where like, you know, most of us here are young people or at least young in spirit. Yeah. And I feel like we're at this inflection point where like main street is going to take over. And, you know, you hear that stupid term main street, but it's like the average investor, I feel like is just like in the beginning stages, like the first inning, not even the first inning. And to me, it's like Cohen is like the first one who has, really of our generation gone out there and is fighting and I think is fighting for the right reasons. Yeah. And so amongst other reasons mm -hmm. that that's where only the young comes from is, you know, you've got a guy who's a billionaire who's self-made. I don't understand why these people try to tear him down. I mean, I do kind of understand why they try to tear him down, but um, this is, this guy's a billionaire and he's fighting up against things that, that I think he's doing it for the right reasons. I really do. And I have some, you know, I have some knowledge about, you know, what kind of guy he is off, you know, outside of business and stuff like that. And this guy's the real deal in my opinion. Right. So, um, so it's kind of that. And, uh, you know, as I said, I think we're in like the first inning of what we're, where, where all this is going. I mean, and Elon owning X, you know, Twitter is just, um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't even think they know the monster that they've created yeah. by giving. <laughs> no, I agree a hundred percent. Um, cool. Uh, so, um, uh, my next question, uh, for you, Bill is, um, obviously you're aware of what's going on with bed, bath and beyond. Uh, I'm sure you read about it in the news and, and whatever it may be. Uh, do you think that, do you, do you think that this company has a chance, um, for instance, of exiting chapter 11 successfully. And when I say that, uh, do you, and again, this is just opinion, uh, and you don't have to answer anything if you don't want to, um, do you feel that for instance, that shareholders, um, you know, given the situation, let's say there's a scenario where possibly it's Carl icon. We we've been speculating for a long time that Carl icon and Ryan Cohen have, have taken interest in this stock, maybe doing something possibly via Sixth street, um, and other connections. Do you think that, uh, well, let me ask you this first. Do you think that there could be a possibility that Carl Icahn or Ryan Cohen could be possibly uh, uh, interested in this uh, company? Well, uh, Carl's interested in anything that makes him money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but in 2016, you know, I had to turn around my family's company, which is a $18 uh, home builder. Mm -hmm. And some of you guys may see what's going on there right now, but I got the opportunity to, to know Carl through that and um, he uh, he's ruthless and he's still with it. Um, I mean, he's, he's incredibly sharp. Yeah. You know, I think I talked to him about a year and a half ago or so. And uh, I mean, this guy's actively looking at deals. He's, he's actively engaged. And then obviously you saw his photo with Ryan Cohen. Mm -hmm. um, and when I talked to him like a year and a half ago, he was like actively still playing tennis and stuff. So I guess uh, I do not have specific knowledge with regard to Bed Bath and Beyond. In fact, I've thought about calling him and just saying, "Yeah, put him, a, bring, get him on the phone, man." <laughs> yeah, tell me anything, but yeah. but knowing him, um, he wouldn't tell me. Yeah, but he probably ask me how he could make money on mm -hmm. it. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's you know, this is just my opinion, right. but um, you know. Uh, who who knows if he thinks he can make money doing it? You know, I wouldn't put it past him. Let's put it that mm -hmm. way. I think it's probably more likely that, and I don't know anything, but I think it's probably more likely that only, you know, keeping a close eye on everything. Right. Um, my next, but again, yeah. Carl can, Carl can come out of nowhere. I mean, this guy's uh, it's amazing. He's still going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he's an incredible guy for sure. Um. My next question for you, Bill, is uh, do you have a position uh, at all in Bed Bath & Beyond uh, via shares or bonds? I do not okay. currently. All right. And you're not under any kind of NDA or anything like that? Not that I know. <laughs> all right. Right on. No. Right on. Cool. Um, I'll go ahead and let uh, ABC jump in here a little bit. Uh, ABC, you got some uh, questions here for Bill? Hey, Bill. It's an absolute pleasure. Thanks for taking the time, my man. I, I, Thank you. I, 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 I'm dumbfounded as to really what, you know, I got so many questions, but I guess really what's, 
what's your opinion on the state of the stock market right now? What do you think the biggest problem is? What, what, what do you see the challenge ahead? I know you're having a lot of difficulties with your home group and, and what's been going on there. What, what do you think needs to be fixed and fixed fast? Uh, it's a great question. Is your name ABC, by it the is. way? <laughs> oh, that, for real? Thing or what? What's that? Is that an acronym for something or what? It's just, yeah, just not doxing myself, my man, but, uh, you know, uh, cool. yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah. So, uh, it's, it's a, this whole conversation is kind of weird in a way because we're talking about Carl Icahn and Brian Cohen and, um, that kind of also informs my view on kind of where things are at right now. I used to think that like Carl, when he was like on CNBC, would talk about, um, executives and how, um, and you know, how bad they are and how, you know, we need to upgrade our executive talent. And I don't know if you've ever heard his speech where he talks about how the CEO is like a fraternity. <laughs> I've ever heard that one where he talks about it, but, um, I'm living through a similar scenario right now where I actually do fundamentally believe that some of these executives can be big problems in these companies. And, you know, it's one of the things where they make so much money that they start to believe their own shit. And, uh, and you know, I think that you see whether it's General Electric or you see some of these once great companies, mm -hmm. you know, these executives, they make so much money. And frankly, they do so very little to make all. And um, so I didn't really subscribe entirely to the Carl, uh, Carl, Carl comments, but I knew that he believed it deep down. Um, and I would say that I, I subscribed to it more than ever. And then seeing my experience and then seeing uh, what Ryan Cohen is also saying, you know, he's also talking about the executives and, and having to get good executives versus bad. And then, you know, obviously he just got rid of his CEO. And then obviously you see like Bed Bath and Beyond, right? It's like I don't know enough about you know everything that happened with Bed Bath and Beyond. Right. And love, I'd, in fact, I'd love for you guys to teach me about it. Um, but you know, I'm sure there were some bad executives along the line, or somebody got fat, happy, and dumb and rich in that whole thing. Yeah. And so, um, to answer your question, you know, my current view on it is like, you know, how can we find great companies where people like Ryan Cohen? And I know he's got. You know, GameStop right now, um, which I've, I've been very impressed that they've been able to even like turn a profit and things like this, given the asset that he had. I mean, it's not like he, you know, it's not like he took over some insurance business that making 100 billion of EBITDA or something, right? Mm -hmm. Like he was taking something back from the grave in a certain way. Um, and so that's what I'm really focused on right now. So um, I, uh, you know, I have a have a nice position in Twitter in X. So I invested in that deal um, just to support Elon. And cause I believe that he's got, you know, uh, in my opinion, he's, he might not have all the characteristics of Brian Cohen or might not have the exact same intentions, but generally speaking, you know, I think that they're trying to build something. So I'm invested in that. I'm invested in somebody I'll probably be announcing soon. I'm invested in somebody who's, who everybody here would know. Uh, I'm under NDA on that, so I can't say who that is. But in, in this guy's a world-class founder. You guys would all know him. Uh, I think he'll be, you know, I think he'll be worth a hundred dollars one day. This guy. Wow. So I'm those investments who, or I'm trying to find those companies and those founders who have the right view of, and um, and um, and aren't corrupted. Um, you know, because in my family situation, you know, I was on the board of this company and we turned this company around and, and did a great job. We got the stock price up and everything. And then I leave the board after my grandfather passed away and we sold most of our shares and the COO, the incoming COO, who's going to make, you know, who makes millions and millions of dollars a year was running these fake Twitter accounts with these fake identities to, you yeah, know, harass I, I, I've been seeing you tweet about that. It's nuts. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. It's, it's insane. I mean, it's like, it's, it's hard to believe that the reality, but it is. And so it's like, okay, so if I discovered that and my name happens to be the, my grandfather founded the company, director of the company. Okay. But for all of those things, how would I ever find out how corrupt some of these things are? So you start to ask the question, what is really going on in these boardrooms? What is really going on in these in these executive suites? Right. 
that's why I think like, you know, it was kind of nice. It was kind of, uh, I wouldn't say arrogant, but it was kind of arrogant of me to, you know, doubt that Carl Icahn was onto something when he said that these executives are a big problem. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I guess the big problem is, uh, <laughs> sorry, Bill, go ahead. I don't know if that answers your question, ABC, but yeah, no, I, I really appreciate it. I guess I have one last question um, and it has to do with the corruption and, and some of the things that you've experienced with your company and your family over time. Um, there's been an awakening of some sort. We're seeing a lot of companies uh, being attacked by the short position. And then there's obviously the issue of, you know, naked uh, shorting itself, which is an illegal activity. Do you find that we're at a tipping point where something such as perhaps Bed Bath & Beyond uh, with GameStop or others that are in this so-called basket, do you think that we're at a tipping point now where we could literally, uh, as a community, as investors, obviously it's our own personal investment, uh, create a catalyst for change? Do you think, you know, are we years away or do you think we're at that pinnacle point now? Because obviously you've seen it in your company, we're seeing it in... FINRA and, and different suits that are being filed. Do you think we're at that tipping point now where we can make catalytic change? Uh, it's a great question. Um, I think that we're one, one situation away from blowing the whole thing open. Um, I think we got really close with GameStop. Um, I think what happened with Robin Hood and all these other things and Citadel and all these guys shutting them down, they may have thwarted it for the meantime, but when this thing pops, it's going to be it's going to be bigger than they ever thought and they can delay it, but they can't stop the inevitable, in my opinion. And I think that, you know, in terms of thinking about it, in terms of time, I don't know what the time is, but um, it just takes one of these things to happen. And I think it will change the entire landscape. Um, and uh, what's your guys view on DRS? So we support it, man. You know, I mean, like we, we talk, you know, we talk about it from time to time. People will come on in DRS, but a lot of us are, you know, a lot of us have varying opinions, you know, some of us, uh, some of us do DRS, some just like to keep our stocks in brokerages, you know, things like that. So, um, you know, we, we never try to, uh, push DRS or anything like that. Cause, cause here, you know, we always want people to be able to do whatever they want with their investment, whether that be DRS sell or day trade, we accept all day, tra you know, all traders here at the PP show. Um, but yeah, man, you know, I, I support DRS. I, I understand what it does. You know, it, it does, uh, put the shares in your name and it's very important, you know, versus a, a brokerage where they can lend out your shares a hundred times over. So I understand the importance of it, but, um, you know, here we we never really try to push any DRS or anything like that. We support it. We just we just want all traders to kind of just uh, do whatever they want, you know, with their money. Whether the, you, you day trade it, great. If you want to hold it for five years in a brokerage, great. If you want a DRS in your name, fantastic. But that's pretty much uh, how it works. People in the chat here are saying PP audio. Yeah, I don't know whose audio is leaking there. Um... Oh, it was Kevin. All right. We'll uh we'll have Kevin just turn down a little bit there. It's like your AC or something there, Kevin. Um, but yeah, uh, Bill, that that's kind of how we approach things. I think that DRS is important, but we obviously want people to be able to make up their own decisions. And um, you know, some some people DRS, some people don't. So, uh, but we understand. Maybe, the importance uh, of it. Bill, could you share your opinion on DRS? Just for you know, my opinion is that uh, myself included, everybody should be open minded with mm -hmm. it because. Um, we should not, in my opinion, we should not underestimate what executives and what um, some of the hedge funds and some of the certain actors on Wall Street will, the lengths that they will go to, especially if there is one ABC and you, you, I think pointed out well, which is like, okay, well, when is this all going to happen? Or when is, when is change actually going to happen? And I think the more that we can remove friction, and I don't know if DRS is, is friction, um, but we just need to keep, I think we need to keep an open mind. And so I've gotten to know the process of DRSing and, and I hear both sides of mm -hmm. it. Um, it is, you know, these systems, they make hack, whether it's DRS or otherwise, I think intentionally to make it more difficult. Yeah. And so, um, 
yeah, that's how I would answer I, it. I, I think the biggest problem with most retail investors, especially in a situation like this, where you know one sudden announcement, one sudden catalyst can change the entire landscape, that we won't, we don't want to be caught in transition. Myself personally, as an investor, I believe in the companies that I'm investing in. I want to DRS because I'm for the long play because I believe in RC and and other you know uh, CEOs that are really kind of like minded in terms of <clears throat> ending this kind of crap that's going on in the market. But more my fear is if I do it today and this catalyst happens within a couple of days, I'm stuck. I'm out of the loop and I won't be able to obviously make, you know, uh, a quick return. Obviously, I, I've got a long play in it, but I think that's the majority of our fear is that the timing is everything with DRS and myself being Canada, it could take a couple of weeks just for me to get a DRS position, have my shares of my name. And like, if I do that now, I could miss out on a boat, so to speak, although I do have the idea that, you know, relatively soon I'll probably, you know, take a, a vast majority in DRS. But I think that's a general concern for most is when do you do it? Because there's that transition period, because like you said, they've made it very difficult in order to On get a purpose. Done. There's yeah. a lot of money behind that. I mean, yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, um, I and agree. I think also, it, like if you look into who it is that's running, like who owns those companies or who they're affiliated with, it's kind of scary, at least for me. And so for me, I think that if someone, like I, you know, in my fantasy world, I'd imagine like the X app, you know, having uh, a DRS system that one was fast and, you know, because I would, I would, I would much rather trust Elon Musk rather than, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Australia and the people that own, you know, ASD or whatever. And, and you mean you don't trust BlackRock? Yeah, I, I just really don't. And like, you know, but or or through the GameStop app, if they also did some kind of um, whether it's cryptographic or not, like some kind of uh, DRS system, like I would love that. But as for right now, just like, you know, there's a lot of ways that that they can like the, the stocks, they, they follow momentum. And so, you know, they can kill momentum by a, a lot of different ways. And one is you you uh, for weeks like AST was down or computer share was down and, and all this stuff. And so they can delay momentum and kill momentum when they want to kill it. And I just, you know, I just kind of want to know, I want to. I want to invest in a, a person I trust rather than just, you know, uh, hopefully this is a thing, you know, hopefully DRS is a thing. Yeah, DRS is great, man. You know, you're taking it, you're taking the shares and, and they're going in your name. Uh, real quick, uh, uh, um, we do have, uh, so Kaz actually set this up, man, because he's the one who tweeted you, man. So he was dying, man. He's texting me like crazy. Pete, be call me, call me, call me. So we're going to give Kaz a call real quick. He wants to say sure. something to Bill here. So why don't we give him a call on the phone I here? I love that guy's enthusiasm. I love me too, energy. man. We love him here. Let's hope he answers. <laughs> Hello. Kaz, you're on the PP show, man. Uh, we have Bill here with us. I know. I'm watching on YouTube. I tried to join the room, but it says full. Oh, of okay. It's going to be full. I mean, you have uh, Bill Pulte, the, the, the only the young uh, is in there, so everybody's going to try to watch. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he cannot hear me, but uh, Bill, you are amazing. I love you, my brother. You're doing great. I, uh, I, I love following you and, uh, you are the best. You're the um, best. One thing I'm he says say, you're the best have, Kaz. Say it again. He says you're the best. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I cannot be at his level, but he's, he's great. All right. Well, I love so his, the, uh, I love his what energy. What I'm going to say right here, he guys, everybody watching, it. once you make the money, he says he loves your invest. energy, even though you get a lot of shit for it, Kaz. Say it again. He says he loves your energy, even though you get a lot of shit for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, everybody who makes money, you got to buy shares in Pulte Group and keep some <laughs> in, in Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> All right. Right on. You heard it from Thanks, Kaz, brother. man. Sure. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Pulte. All right. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. All right. I respect that guy. You know, he's he's uh, he's out there hustling. He is. Yeah. He, he's a good dude. You know, he, he's really, um, you know, uh, always kind of dug deep into this bed bath stuff, you know, visiting warehouses at one point, stuff like that, you know, really, uh, really like the reporter type, you know, to, to dig down to the truth of what's going on with the stock. So, yeah. All right, cool. Um, so, uh, we do have uh, Carter here with us. He wanted to ask a question to Bill, um, sure. uh, Carter, go ahead, man. Uh, Bill, I just want to say thank you for, um, uh, for, for being on here with us. There's over a thousand people here that are just like so excited to see you here. 
thank you for popping into our space that we were having uh, for GME earnings in March too. That was a surprise. That was really cool. So I just wanted to say thank you. My, my question is, uh, what are your thoughts on Teddy? And what do you think RC is trying to do with it? It's an excellent question. He's up to something. He has to be, right? International trademarks. Like, what's going on, man? He's not a dummy. No. No, he's not. Uh, what I do you think, though? Something. I, I, don't, I don't know what he's up to, but I think he's up to something. Mm -hmm. I think he could have, you know, he could be doing a lot of other things. He could be focused on a lot of other companies. He could be focused on a lot of different projects. And the fact that uh, I just love his consistency. You know you're right, going right. to get with this guy. And um, it's kind of a breath of fresh air, like getting back to our mm -hmm. talk that ABC and I were having is like, these executives, you can't count on them at all. I mean, they would sell out their mom in two seconds. And with RC, whether it's his relationship with his dad or whatever, it's like you just get the sense that this is like somebody who's going to actually fulfill what he says he's going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually had a question to build off of that um, from Carter's. And uh, uh, in terms of like Teddy, you say that he's a very smart man. You know, obviously he's not a dummy. Um why, I guess with your own opinion, uh, with him not being a dummy, why would he come into Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, uh, for a short period of time, buy a stake in it, and then immediately proceed to sell uh, while at the same time having a standstill with the company? Um, do you think that he he does have a little bit more interest than maybe the media or anyone else is leading on to believe? Well, I think that he probably is very interested in the situation obviously because he took a position and i think he's still interested based on just that's just my own opinion sure um but i think that we don't really know because of the way that these public securities are is um you don't really know um what has transpired between ryan and his team and the board mm -hmm. and we don't really know you know, how everything went down and um, you wish that you could, but these boards, they can be so opaque and there can be so much backstabbing and there can be so many games and there can be so many, you know, corrupt promises between people that we don't, we don't exactly know why Ryan has done what he's done, but I would bet if I was a betting man, which I guess we all kind of are betting men, I would bet that he played it as well as he could and he's playing this as well as he could. And there mm -hmm. are just some things that are out of his control. Mm -hmm. um, there's something, I, again, I don't know what it was, but there's something that caused him to behave the way that he's behaved with the situation. And, um, you, you know, they, they're not going to put that in an SEC filing. He's not going to go on CNBC and talk about it. And um, he probably legally can't anyway. So it's just one of those things where, I think you either trust them or you don't. Mm -hmm. Right on. Uh, Kevin, what do you think about it? I think Ryan got told to just leave. Mm -hmm. Bed Bath & Beyond, he's invested in it. He gave him the same speech he gave to GameStop. Like, you go with my plan or you go bankrupt. So he bought the calls way out of the money mm -hmm. if they took his plan money maker and then six months later i know how hard that guy works they speculation told him they weren't going to go with this plan they didn't care they didn't want his advice mm -hmm. or him on the board and he sold his shares i think it's interesting that um you know or he just didn't want to play the politics i think kevin's right or he just yeah. didn't want to play the politics right in the boardroom i mean mm -hmm. if you don't have the votes in these boardrooms it's like these boardrooms because I was on one, and I'm not saying the board I was on was like this. Mm -hmm. At least, you know, not going to comment on that. So I'll just make a general observation. It's like these boardrooms can be like prisons, you know. And if you don't have the right board composition, um, you know, Ryan must have been might have been like, "Fuck this! I don't need this shit in my life," right. you know. Yeah. And the, the thing is, though, is that uh, he sold, but he still had a standstill with the company. So it was interesting that uh, especially the cooperation agreement, it, it ended um, in March of this year. And then uh, one month later, we proceed to go through uh, Chapter 11 bankruptcy where they are uh, dealing with the debt. And they were able to raise the debt down from uh, nearly five billion down to what? A little under two billion now. Is that right, ABC? 
about no, 1.2. You're, you're, you're muted, ABC. Uh, 1.2. 1. 1.8. Okay, 1. 1.8. So 1. 8. Right. Uh, if, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense, you know, them going through the Chapter 11, you know, to deal with the the debt. But, um, yeah, the, the Ryan, the Ryan, you know, being involved has, has definitely been um, – uh, very interesting. Plur, did you want to say something there? You muted me. Oh, sorry about that. Go ahead, Plur. <laughs> My apologies. Hey, hello, Mr. Pulte. Uh, name, name's Plur. Call Huge me Bill. Um, what I wanted to say is because you mentioned the boardroom and, and RC not wanting to you know mess around with that politics because Shelly, Shelly Lombard, she's, she's still on the board. She's one of RC's picks. And then there was two of RC picks that were on the board prior to her and the two, one was Ben Rosenwig. The other one, I apologize for forget, forgetting the name while I'm talking to you right now. But when the two left, they, they left on good terms. So with them leaving on good terms, is it is it possible? That, <laughs> uh, got it. I, I just want to see what your thoughts were on that. Thank you. I don't know. We just, we just, I guess what I'm trying to say is we don't know, you know? Yeah. And, and I don't know. And, you know, full disclosure, I do not know, but, uh, Ryan and I share the same attorney um, and uh, it's a very well-known shareholder activist attorney, mm -hmm. uh, two gentlemen, two, two, two attorneys. We have the same attorneys and um, you know, these guys are pros. These attorneys are pros. So again, I can't say what it is cause I don't know, but you know, I'm sure he ran down every, which way and ultimately came to the conclusion that he needed to behave that way. All right. Excellent. Uh, Travis, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to ask Bill here? Oh man. Claire, you're looking man. good. I like the suit. Look sharp. Thank you. Bill, Bill watches the show, man. He's I know, I know. So here I am wanting to be my regular self. Everybody's being proper, and I'm You've like, seen all of it, man. I gotta be, I gotta be real. I gotta be real. So, yeah. uh, Bill, thanks for joining. Uh, you know, it's an honor to have you on. Uh, just want to say, I absolutely love your philanthropy work. Uh, you know, if, if things work out for us, I have the same types of intentions, and just want to do better for the community around me. Um, you know, my questions are going to be mostly on some of the Twitter space and things that you've done. You know, we've seen some of the memes and everything else out there. We've seen the trolling that you did on the Meltdown sub, which was absolutely fantastic, by the way. I absolutely loved it. But, it was beautiful. Uh, yes. Uh, just want to Those guys are so easy because they traffic and hate. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was. I was laughing through most of the. Uh, I, I want to call it trolling, but I don't know if you're really trolling or just trying to have a good time with them. No, but, I was uh, definitely trolling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my question is going to be on the Twitter space and stuff like that. You know, you've seen the memes of like Star Wars. You're in pictures with, you know, RC, Holly Etlin, and, you know, Icon, everybody. And, you know, you're, you're liking these. I think you've shared a few or even retweeted some of them. What are your thoughts on some of those? Or why, why are you retweeting some of those just for fun? Yeah, just just for fun. And and uh, it's going to be people like all of us on this call who are going to, like to ABC's point, it just takes one of these things. So it's like, I'm just trying to do my part, you know, and uh, yeah, it doesn't even have to be me in the memes. I mean, I share them with Ryan all the time. Yeah, we see that. Ryan, Ryan, you know, Ryan's the guy, you know, we're just, I'm just a supporting cast trying to get him to be bigger, better, better than ever. Cause if he does it, then, then we're all going to do it. And I think the public market could look entirely different in 10 years and certainly in 20 or 30 years. I think, I think the public market, the whole complexion of the market could be completely different. Um, if I could add what? on to that, I think uh, like I've seen things go through a cycle of like people making money by tearing things down and then people making, you know, building things back up. And, you know, as of right now, I mean, we see how much I, I feel like we're coming out out of that cycle where we see the effects of people having torn down so much. And um, right now, it seems like like you and Ryan Cohen and Elon Musk. Are, are, are some of the, the, the main people that, that are they're in that building phase. And like, I don't know how we can better kind of support what you guys are doing because I like where it's headed and I know it's like a big obstacle. Yeah. So is the question just what can we all do? Yeah. I mean, I like, we can, um, just, we can just go nuts and we can just, you know, retweet the <laughs> shit out of stuff and like it and, you know, tell the GME guys, hey, I actually have sympathy for these guys. I mean, they traffic and hate all day long. 
Mm -hmm. And I think we just lead with love, you know, and we lead with, okay, Ryan's building a good business. You know, I mean, that's what I believe. Ryan's spending his days working his ass off. He's saying he doesn't want people who are involved in his business who aren't working his ass off. Right. So it's like, I think if we just stick with the values that make these companies good and expose the selfish, greedy intentions that, you know, that corrupt all human beings and we all do it together and, you know, we all support each other. It's just, just, you know, it's like time over pressure. It's like ABC's question, I think, was so good. It's like, well, what's the time? I don't know, but I know enough time uh, and something's going to hit. So um, I know it's like small for me to be retweeting these tweets and and liking these tweets and the memes and stuff. But it's like, I don't know. I mean, even just the fact that we're here talking to each other and you know, there's a thousand or two thousand people. And these are these are important people that are listening to this. This is not, you know, this is not just some generic stream. Right. This is these are real investors. These are real people putting the real money up. And um, I don't think they should be underestimated. Um, we had a question from a user um, about Pulte Homes, if you don't mind uh, 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 answering that, Bill. Um, what do you and Pulte Homes Group prioritize financially when building new homes versus the current market prices of homes in today's market? Yeah, so it's a good question. First of all, I'm not with uh, Pulte currently. Mm-hmm. Um, I was pretty active in the 2016 turnaround. We had to get involved, get get rid of a bad CEO. Unfortunately, we've got the bad CEO's right-hand guy is is now the new CEO. So we're dealing with that situation. So um, I'm not currently with the business, but I would say just generally speaking. So um, for people who aren't familiar with me, so like, you know, my name is Bill, last name's Pulte. My grandfather's name was also Bill, last Mm -hmm. name Pulte. And so he was kind of the pioneer of home building in the United States. Uh, He really was. And, um, you know, it's, you know, it's not the sexiest thing in the entire world, but um, it's something that he was great at. And and so I was very close with my grandfather. My grandpa had 14 kids, 25 grandchildren. Um, I was the only one in the Pulte Homes business with my grandfather. Um, and I did that starting in my early to mid 20s. So I was pretty young. I'm 35 now. But I spent a number of years doing that business with him. And um that was an incredible relationship that I had with my grandfather. Unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago, but he taught me a lot about, um, you know, construction and, and building homes in particular. And I think it's a good question. I think that the bigger issue with um, homes and homes affordability uh, in the country is that uh, you really have these onerous local building codes that are actually keeping these prices high. And what I mean by that is like in Japan, you have what's called the universal building codes. You have, um, you know, basically they nationalize the regulatory system around construction. And so here in the United States and the person's question was, well, how do you build uh, not cheaper homes, but how do you build homes that uh, can be maybe be more affordable? And I think that the the action somebody says 14 kids guy just worked and fucked all day that's pretty funny yeah yeah that's that, uh, that chat's fucking that's nuts chat. man. yeah that's pretty funny people used to give my grandfather a lot of shit for that they say how the hell did you do that now in fairness yeah. nine of the kids were biological five weren't but still mm. nine kids nine kids in 12 years that was, you know there was a lot going on there right um and she had a couple of miscarriages so if you think about it you know that was that was quite a lot of babies but um but anyway, you know, um, what were we saying? So <laughs> affordable uh, homes. Yes. Affordable. Yeah, homes. Just, you know, it's not every day you look in the chat and there's somebody talking about your grandpa <laughs> fucking somebody. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. Welcome to the PP show, man. There yeah, you have it. The PP show, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Wait. So, oh, so anyway, so about the homes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the building codes, you know, the building codes are really what's prohibitive for cost. So I think a lot of these builders can actually build stuff, you know, with per, for, for a pretty good value, but, uh, the big problem is uh, these building codes and, um, you know, the not in my backyard and all those other things. I respect them. But mm-hmm. at some point, you know, you know, if there's a little turtle or if there's a little bird or something like that, sometimes those turtles or birds need to be moved and you need to put new homes in there if you want places for human beings to live. Right. Um, Plur, you had a question for Bill? Yeah, th- thank you very much. Uh, um Bill, love love your Twitter. I love the tweets where where every, pretty much everything you stand for is to protect animals and children at all costs. 
you know, like that one tweet with the lady holding on to the duck on the by the boat says everyone deserves an animal. You also have that tweet tweet of your son in the the, the locker wearing blue, the number three on his jersey. Uh, you also have him sleeping in the car seat wearing blue, and then you also have you uh, replying to PP seats re- wearing blue and some fly uh, fly jacket and some sunglasses, smoking a cigar, and you say, you know, essentially, you know. And oh then, yeah, oh, <laughs> that's what I was gonna ask Bill too. You go ahead for. <laughs> um. And then, well, you could ask that because I, I have. I, have like, I, I can't. Two. I can't answer that. Not now. Okay, we got it. Got <laughs> Six it. months, I can answer. That. <laughs> All right, there you have it, man. That's all we need to hear. Um, All right, but but, but it's funny because because, uh, you know, you mentioned founders, and and the thing that's great about founders that you've taught me, Bill, is essentially they create things, or they die, and it's so hard in this GDP environment. And, and it's also awesome that I learned from you in your writing that you weren't born into the or you didn't even receive a penny until after you're already successful. So you kind of made on your own. Yeah, so I made a hundred million bucks and then I inherited 15 million from my grandfather. But I didn't get right. the 15 million until I'd made the hundred million. And interestingly, he didn't leave anybody else in the family, if you can believe it, except for his widow. Mm-hmm. Um, money. Wow. Kind of crazy. Hmm. So, so whenever I have the opportunity to meet like leaders like you, I always think, you know, like what's, what's your top three and like, a, 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 a you know, RC is a founder, as you've mentioned, and he says, you know, it's all about custard de- delight, which your grandfather Bill used to say. Yeah, it's kinda the time. In fact, I tried to when I was on the board uh, and I can say this, I was trying to get the CEO who's the current CEO to focus on customer delight because he had something about you know, consumer inspired or something. Nobody knows what the hell consumer inspired means. You got to delight the customer. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. You know the difference between a delighted customer and a satisfied customer? I would like to know. Let's a hear satisfied it. customer, you know, you, you, you provide them a service and you say to them, hey, how was that? And they say, oh, it was, that was pretty good. I actually really liked it. A delighted customer will then go and be a sales rep to all of his friends and family members and say, that was a hell of a meal. You got to go down to that restaurant. You got to check out that restaurant. You got to go try that product. That's a delighted customer. And sure that's the know. difference between a satisfied customer and a delighted customer. And so that was one of the many things, but it's a very big thing that when I heard Ryan Cohen say that for the first time, I was like, this guy fucking gets it. Like mm-hmm. this guy's the real fucking deal. Yeah. And unlike my grandfather, who is amazing, you know, I got to know my grandfather when he was in, I mean, I knew my grandfather when he was, you know, when I was really young, but I'm saying I really got to start working with him in business when he was like 70, you know, he certainly turned 70 ish and Cohen knew this stuff at a very young age. So, you know, that's why I have tremendous respect for whatever his dad did with him, because for him to know all this stuff at a young age and then build Chewy and, you know, people say that he didn't do anything with Chewy or that he like wasn't responsible. It's like, I, I don't believe that at all. I mean, and the fact that he talks about customer delight and then they send this stuff to people who, you know, it's their birthdays or something like that. And then they get some kind of discounts or whatever it is you guys would know better than me. But like this guy gets it, you know? Right. I just um, can't say, wait to see what he does with flowers GME next. When your dog yeah. passes away. Yeah. <laughs> and then and in, in terms of customer delight, someone else that's interesting that, that work has worked in the past with RC goes by the name, Larry Chang, uh, Harvard, you know, football star. Um, he 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 became successful at a really early age, and like his number and it, his volition top three for CEOs essentially was like number one strategy and customer customer delight, number two uh, hiring as well as retaining maintaining uh, talent, and then number three gaining capital and the allocation of that capital through external and internal means, uh, which I think as a if I was a CEO and I got that kind of guidance. Um, that would be great. And he's considered a founder. And he said just recently, he's he's spoken with a wise founder um, within the last month is for about, you know, eight hours uh, where they're able to go back and forth and talk about things at the inside. Have you yourself recently uh, may have had the opportunity to talk for eight hours? This has nothing to do with uh, what I stated, but uh, no, the answer is the, the answer. The answer is no. I would talk to him. I've actually thought about reaching out to him, um, but yeah, we'll see. 
Cool. Uh, I bet I got, Ryan Cohen's watching this right now. I don't know. I, that, I I'm is. sure he is, man. I'm sure he is. It's an enjoyable show, man. You know, uh, the he, show watches, he watches more than you think. Oh, yeah? I wow. Think so. uh, I mean, not, right. not the PP show. I don't. I can't say whether that. But, but everything this in general. Guy's, this guy's watching. Yeah. Right. And then, um, yeah, go ahead, Plur. And then I got a question for Billy. Here. Okay. This is the last. Well, I got two. But the, this one will be kind of short. Speaking of coincidences. Sure. It turns out that I love cows, Bill. I really love cows. And I, I, I have some DB that's tied to RC and is like, uh, is like, give me liver, give me death, COVID, like, tweet. And, 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 and the thing I love about it is is it shows, like, in art. Um, when an artist puts something out, such as Ryan Cohen, you could, you could interpret it in, like, so many different ways. And on top of it, you don't even know who the true audience truly was for him when he did that. Um, and, and, it, and it goes to show like his side of like to protect animals and children at all costs. But at the same time, you know, as he said in his GME DD interview, he has kind of a dark side to him. And it's kind of interesting in, in that tweet that that uh, you, you uh, said to him, you like, you look you look good, bro. Uh, in reference to he was on top of a cow on May 15th. Uh, yeah, on uh, I think it's May twenty fifth, actually twenty twenty three, and it's kind of interesting because you told him he's looking good, which he does. He looks really freaking good. But the thing I found interesting about it is the timing, and the timing of him riding the cow was just a week or two after Gary Gensler's SEC lesson from a Larry Cow, May fifteenth, twenty twenty three, um, and essentially where Gary Gensler talks about you know the Swiss cheese model. Uh, near, uh, middle, far, deep threats in the financial system. Is there is there potential that uh, RC and the cow uh, potentially represents him as that tipping point to Gary Gensler of that SEC uh, speech? I don't know. <laughs> All right, that's the, there. You go. Uh, uh, Kevin's gonna go ahead and ask this uh, real quick. Um, uh, but real quick, I, I just needed to ask this because uh, I am curious. Then Kevin, uh, uh, please feel free to. Um, Bill, when did you discover that uh, you liked doing the philanthropy uh, uh, thing? I am curious uh, if there was maybe a certain moment uh, in your life that you discovered you enjoyed doing it. Uh, just wanted that question, and then we'll move on to uh, Kevin uh, asking you something, too. So I had made this money, and just for everybody's background, I made most of my money in heating and air conditioning, of mm -hmm. all things, believe it or not. Uh, wow. And, and so I have bought... Um, you know, over 20 air conditioning companies in the past now 10 years. Uh, I currently own 15 air conditioning companies. That's that's where I make most of my money. Um, and I had a big liquidity event in 2016 um, where I sold two of my main air conditioning assets. And that's really where I made a ton of money, more mm -hmm. money than I ever thought that I would make. And um, so you know, here I am with all this money and, and, um, you know, don't get me wrong because of my grandfather and my dad's also been very successful, um, in his own right. He's a different type of home builder than my grandfather is, you know, I, I lived a good life. Um, but I came into this, you know, significant amount of resources after selling this to, uh, I, I, so I sold these two companies to a multi-billion dollar private equity fund and I got more money, as I said, than I even knew what to do with. I think I was 27 years old at the time. And so I, you know, I was doing, you know, the usual things. I was, you know, buying, you know, private jet flights. I got married. I had a great wedding. Um, it was amazing. I'm a helicopter pilot. So I was flying, you know, wow. helicopters like nobody's business. And, you know, for, for once I could finally, you know, afford to do it, you know, and in a way that, uh, that I wanted to do it. But, um, so all those things were amazing, but what I quickly realized was like, especially around the time I had my first daughter and I have three young kids is I was like, okay, this is great to have money and stuff. But one of the things I always liked about my grandfather was, and I always thought it was just cause he was a depression era boy that he was cheap and frugal and those kind of things. Like he's like, you know, and I could tell you stories about this, like, uh, you know, like, like this is like a Diet Coke and it's like he would buy the small Diet Coke because he could keep refilling it. Right. So he was like one of those kind of depression era boys. So I thought yeah. that like that's why he did it. And he would always say to me, like, you know, charity is is as much of a gift for 
the person as it is for you. And it probably is more of a charity for yourself. It's, it probably helps you more than anything. And I was kind of like, you know, I mean, it kind of made sense, but not really. And then, so I, so I got this money and I was doing those things. And so I just started giving away some of my money and, um, I really enjoyed it. And it was one of those things where it was like, you know, when you take care of other people, you're actually helping yourself. And I fundamentally believe that. Um, and I have no problem saying it. Like I help other people to help myself. Mm -hmm. Like I selfishly am willing to do it. I'm like not sitting here saying, Oh, you know, look at me and you know, I'm helping, you know, these different people and stuff, but <clears throat> it's genuinely cause I really enjoy it. And it gets me really to, uh, I don't know. I just feel really good. I feel selfless. I feel like I take all my problems and focus. It's, on it's godly. Else's and it's godly to help others, man. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. I mean, we talk about the GME meltdown people. I mean, you know, they traffic and hate. And uh, so right. I try as much as I can, you know, obviously I'm a flawed human being like anybody else, but, uh, you know, the traffic and, and charity and stuff like that. So I put out this tweet and I was like, Hey, you know, and I had like, I don't know, 30,000 followers at the time or something, which mm -hmm. was a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and I never thought I'd have 30,000 followers. So I was like, okay, like, let me put out like that. I'm going to give $10,000 to a charity that would use this money, you know? And so I tweeted something out and it, the damn tweet just went absolutely insane. Like I got like five or 6,000 likes, which at the time was like, you know, five or 6,000 likes. It's a lot of people, you know? Yeah. And especially on Twitter. And, um, Cause it's one of those platforms where like a lot of people see it, but they don't always like tweets. So, so anyway, so I was like, wow, something's on this. And so then I started posting GoFundMe's for these different veterans. Like I would post like, like there was this one veteran and like he had these, he had these teeth problem. And I, I didn't realize it, how many Americans and how many people have problems with their teeth. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys know that, but you know, some people don't have teeth. I mean, it's a very common thing in the United States and people's teeth degrade and they don't see dentists and, you know, who knows what else happens. And it's not just drugs and especially the veterans, you know, the veterans, you know, some of these guys get polluted on some of these ships and, and everything. So I started posting these GoFundMe's for these different veterans and these guys, they started getting like new teeth because I was just tweeting out these links and I was like, wow. Okay. So I can tweet, you're saying I can tweet out this shit, basically do very little work and, you know, yeah, I'm putting in significant money to grow this, but it's like, that's pretty sweet, you know? Right. And so then I started posting different GoFundMes like that I would find. And this is one of the things that bothers me a lot about this kind of executive situation that I'm mm -hmm. dealing with. And, and one day we'll get past it, but is that I haven't been posting a lot of GoFundMes lately, but I will. And I'm going to start getting back more into that here soon. But I was posting these GoFundMes for these different families who were who either lost their home in a, in a, um, uh, a fire. Um, I mean, I, I mean, there are so many examples of these different GoFundMes I was posting and, um, these things would just go viral and, yeah. um, and so they would fill up and, you know, we'd raise 30, 40,000 bucks and get them a new home and everything. And so anyway, it was pretty exciting. So not to bore you with the philanthropy stuff. No, 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 we, no, we want to hear about it. You can obviously tell that's, you know, that's what I'm, really interested in day to day mm -hmm. and uh obviously you know involved in these other things but that you know that's what's most exciting to me about x is that i think that's going to take this whole thing to you know twitter philanthropy which i so-called invented and i did but yeah. i'll just mention one other thing is so then we started getting momentum and you know my follower account was growing but not too much sure and i was in northern michigan one night and um by the way, do you have a time frame? Because I don't mean to keep going here. No, Let's no, no, go. man. Uh, I was going to ask you if you're on the uh, timer. You can hang out the whole show if you want tonight, man. Yeah. No, no. I'll let you go in a minute. But, <laughs> All right. um, but so I'm sitting there at dinner and I'm having a, I don't know, I, ashamed to say it now, but a Bud Light. And I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I was having a Bud Light <laughs> yeah. and, um, or Coors Light. I don't know what it was, but. And I was sitting out looking over the river and I was at dinner with my dad and my sister and stuff and my wife. And I said, now, I'm going to tweet that uh, that if the president retweets me, I'll give away a car. So I type on Twitter and we're sitting there and and I'm uh, having this beer. And, you know, they're probably thinking, you know, people who I'm with think, you know, what the fuck, you know, whatever, you know, you're writing this tweet. So I write out this tweet and I said, if at real Donald Trump will retweet this tweet, I will give a veteran a brand new car. And I'm thinking, OK, you know, yeah, I've gotten some 
whatever. I've gotten some traction lately and my accounts, you know, been whatever viral. So anyway, so finish the beer, finish the dinner and go back to the cottage. And I was actually staying at my grandfather's cottage because he had just passed away. It was totally weird, a whole weird thing. Because I had had the idea to give away money on my grandfather's patio at my grandfather's cottage. I now have my own cottage, but it was just weird that it was there right after he passed away. Mm -hmm. Again, I know I'm giving too much, but so we go back to the cottage and I'm on the, I'm on the patio and I remembered I was having another beer and I looked down at my phone and it says, uh, and it has this photo that you recognize on Twitter and, and it says, I, I real Donald Trump with the blue check mark retweeted your tweet. And I go, Holy that's shit. big. You know? Yeah, that's so, big. And then all of a sudden, you know, I don't know if you remember, but like, especially when he was on Twitter, when he was the president of the United States, it's like he would, he could, he could change, you know, things very quickly, you know, being the president of the United States, retweeting it. And so uh, all of a sudden, all the news outlets start calling and everything saying, are you going to fulfill this? Are you going to do this, et cetera? So sure as hell, I got on the phone and figured out a veteran. And then the next day, I think I bought a Chevrolet and then I went down and gave it to him. And then, um, yeah, it was just insane. So I went from like 30,000 followers to a hundred thousand followers to 200,000 followers just from the Trump retweet. Wow. And it just went like that. And then, and then I did another giveaway and, and I saw the president in Washington DC and he, and he says, that was amazing. You know, and he Mm -hmm. says some other things about it and he says, let's do it again. And I said, okay, I'll do it tonight. So we did it again. Mm -hmm. And then that really got it uh, going again. So I gave away two cars with the president. Excellent. uh, That was kind of the birth of it. Yeah, cool. Um, All right. This history. Awesome. Uh, We'll move on to Kevin. Uh, And real quick, Bill, um, how long do you have with us? Just so I can keep an eye on time. Uh, I don't want to get time. Okay. Um, uh, Real quick, we're going to move on to Kevin. uh, Or I'm sorry. Yeah, we're going to move on to Kevin. But real quick, Kaz is texting me like crazy. Somebody's saying in here too, like whatever. Yeah. I did try to get Biden to uh, to do it. And I, I don't think that um, a conventional politician would do it. But it's like when there becomes our generation of presidents and stuff like that, like to, to ABC's question, it's like all it takes is like one transformative leader from our generation or one company. And this thing's going to like, uh, I, I don't know, I think yeah. it's going to blow up. Um, so, uh, Kaz is very insistent on this question. He's texting me like crazy. And then we'll move on to Kevin. Uh, he's insistent on knowing what the eyes meant in your response to, uh, his, uh, crinkle fries, uh, post on, on Twitter. (laughs) That's what he, he has to know. What are the eyes, man? Is it eyes on the prize? Is it eyes on the fries? I mean, what is it? No, I just, I just thought it was cool. I All right, there you go. He thought it was cool. He's also curious. Uh, he says, uh, PP, ask him, what do you think about the trademark crinkle fries and how I can get the support to, to make it done to take on the top food, fast food in the world, McDonald's? <laughs> All, right. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, move on to Kevin, uh, unless you have anything to add there, Bill. Nothing. <laughs> All right, uh, Kevin, go ahead. He's man. a good guy. He is. He's a cool dude. Hey, Bill. How we doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing good here. I'm glad we got to do the same call the same night. Um, quick question. My post sure. that made you slide into my DMs, I about fainted. So <laughs> what about that post? So what was the post about? me? It was about the possibility of Adam Arian lending out his shares for a million plus dollars a week. Yeah, I just, uh, I think the more the more that stuff can get out there, the better. So I didn't know what, I didn't know what it was all about. And I think if you could lay out, if, is he actually lending out his shares? We don't know. Nobody knows except for the brokerage that he has his shares at. But Mm -hmm. I was just basing that post on the current rate that they're charging and how many shares he has. That at that rate, you know, you're making your money back every single month and a half. Mm. No matter what, the yeah. Price I mean, of the I, don't, I don't know if it's accurate. Like, meaning if it can be spread across, you know, all time frames, he'd get paid that. But yeah, I mean, whether it's him or anybody else, we need to know what you know. If these guys are running these companies, what they're, uh, you know, how they're making money on their shares or whatever. Absolutely, it should be 
in my opinion, mandatory reporting if you let it out because everyone's contract says you can't, you know, buy puts or hedge against your own shares that you're holding or sell calls to people. But there's nothing in the writing that I've seen from the SEC that says you have to report if you lent your shares to a broker. And with AMC going at a thousand plus percent, and he's the biggest shareholder, like there's, I see no reason why he wouldn't be personal. Like, I mean, that is higher income than he's ever made his entire life from AMC just by doing it. But that was speculation. Yeah, I don't know. I wish I knew. You and me both. All in due time. I love the philanthropy, man. I You remind me of the first day I wanted to become rich. I was watching Survivor when I was about 12 years old. And they went to this little village in the middle of absolute nowhere. And just started handing kids basketballs and soccer balls off the yacht that they arrived on. And I was like, yeah, I could do that for the rest of my life. Hmm. Like real philanthropy, like where you get to see it and feel it every single day. And like the money you're giving out to those people. Yeah, it's not like the need and stuff. Exactly, exactly. I I posted before I got just blown up and deleted a couple of days ago that my business law teacher said the most corrupt thing in the United States is nonprofit businesses. He's like, it's like an oxymoron. And there's so many charities and stuff like that that are just, nobody knows what goes to there, no matter how many billions of dollars. And like every day you're just giving this much to this person that needed it. I love it, man. Like that has to feel so good. There can't be anything like that to do with your wealth. Right on. Yeah, I I agree. I I think we're just getting started too with it. Yeah. I gave the story earlier about how some of the inflection points, but it's like, we went from 300,000. Now we're at 3 million. It's like, imagine how much we could do or how many GoFundMes we could take care of for people who, you know, like one of the GoFundMes we raised the funeral money in like two tweets for a uh, seven-year-old girl who got eaten by a dog on her bike. Oh my God. And, uh, you know, Twitter philanthropy took care of that in two or three tweets. Yeah. Um, so awesome, man. A lot of people in the chat are calling for the mushroom stamp here. Bill, you, have you ever seen the stamp here on the PP show? No, I just saw it, though. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm yeah. trying to read the chat, too. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. All right, so uh, ABC had a question. Uh, ABC, please uh, feel free to ask Bill what, what you were thinking. Uh, Bill, I, I love the philanthropy. I follow it on a daily basis. Um, you know, the odd time, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of retreat, retweet, excuse me. Um, I... Mrs. ABC and I actually started, we opened up a company a couple of years ago, just to, obviously not on your scale. Uh, certainly don't have the followers that you have, but um, I guess the best way is sum it up. And, and I encourage everybody to look at giving is receiving. I, I cannot explain to you how cool it is when you get a little smile or a thank you or a hug, or you change some kid's life, whether it be for a medical reason. Um, it's just amazing. But on that virtue, uh, you know, I, I adore what you do. I think it would be even cooler if you had a lot more army behind what you're doing because it could really impact not only the United States, but, you, I mean, on a global level. So my my big hope is that, you know, if, if this basket does break and there's a transfer of wealth in society, that everybody really tries to approach everything from a, you know, a change perspective and, and help others out there because I believe that we've been on a downward spiral where everybody's entitled and very self-oriented. And I can I can attest, and again, it's not on your level, Bill. But the question being is, I fell in love with RC. I, I didn't even know a damn thing about stock six months ago, and PP can attest to it because I messaged him and I said, "Dude, I've never bought a stock in my life. You know, I'm really interested in Ryan Cohen, and yeah, show me the ways, teach me about it." And so he showed me Reddit and showed me, you know, read this post and go read this guy, and we just collaborated back and forth. And I I was born about ten minutes away from RC. Uh, I bought all the books and I really kind of studied who this guy was and what he did with GME. And I, I fell in love with the virtues of it, 
so much so that recently I was offered a CMO position at a C-level company, and I actually refused the equity offering and said, no, I want to buy it. Now, that was kind of a foolish move because I'm not at the level that you guys are at, so I could obviously use it financially. Um, but that's where I've really had this determination to kind of follow in the path. And you guys are my mentors. The question being is, with these virtues and the moral convictions that RC has, and it's a personal question, I know you can't answer for RC, but do you believe that if RC was no longer in this play, being the, the, the man that he is, the words that he speaks, the actions that he takes, and the character he is, do you believe in some way he would somehow tell us that he's not involved because the standstill agreement has come to an end? There would be some sign or some deliverance on his part because he has such a large community behind him and you're seeing division. And it's literally this, you know, this, the art of war is divide and conquer. And we're seeing these subgroups literally fighting against each other, like GME and all these super stonks and every, and what's happening is we're literally, there should be a large gathering as to the entire moral of the story of what we're trying to do. But yet there's this individual separation. I agree. Even with the AMC people. Yeah. yeah, and it, it's almost getting out of control. <laughs> Excuse me. And so my question being is, from your personal opinion, knowing who Ryan is and his work ethics and who he is, do you believe in some subtle way he would have the ability to let you know us know that he is no longer involved in Bed Bath & Beyond? I think genuinely that he does not know. And I, I have no I, – I would never, you know, whatever – you know, whatever, but yeah. I, 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 I would, I would bet he doesn't even know unless he signed something recently, I would bet he doesn't even know if he's going to be involved or throughout all of this time, just like even me, it's like, if, if there was a way for me to be involved, I would get involved. Um, and maybe I will seriously. Um, but it's like, even with Ryan and again, I don't know, but I think I think he's I think all options are on the table and that's just my own view. Do I think that he would have affirmatively have stated something differently? Probably not, but mm. I don't even think that I don't even I don't need, I don't even let my brain go there because I know that like if there's a if there's a deal there, if there's some way for him to do it, he's he's going to find a way to do it. And he's got he's got all the brains in his brain. He's got great lawyers he knows how to fight. He knows how to, he knows how to deal with these characters. And there's a reason, and I don't know what it is, but there's a reason he got out of there. And so, you know, does he eventually, is he eventually the person who's involved in this? I don't know, but you know, we could wake up tomorrow morning and he could be very involved or he could be very not involved, but I would bet if I was a betting man and I, I promised myself I wouldn't say anything on the show about it, but Tell us <laughs> if I was a betting man, I would say at a minimum, mm -hmm. at a minimum, he's, you know, and I'm just trying to be careful with what I say, but at a minimum, he's, he's probably very active. I would think in, yeah. in everything that's going on, but that's just, you know, that's just conjecture. That's just my own opinion. It's, it's opinion. Of course. Um, that's what we think too. Yeah. We've been speculating. This and that's why we're all in the play. And again, not to put you on the spot and you can't speak for him, but you know, the moral of the story being is that I love what you leaders are doing because there's, there is a new generation coming. Uh, up. We're all leaders, by the way, we're not. And that's why it's like, like the power is in all of us. It's not in Pulte. It's not in Cohen. It's literally in yeah. fucking everybody here. Yeah. It's like next time it's like, okay, how do we get the PP show to be at 10,000 people? But it's like, the yeah, right 10, let's do people. it, man. Yeah, you know, and let's it's fucking like, do it. But it's like the fact that we have 1,000. I think somebody said we even have 2,000 people in here. I mean, these are these are the leaders of the future. These are the mm -hmm. people we need running for president. These are the people right we need running these public companies, not these fucking crooks who are yeah. paying themselves $15 million a year to sit on their fucking ass and work from home. Yep. I appreciate you, my man. Yeah. 100%. Uh, Michael here had a question uh, for Bill, if, uh, if if you're still sitting in, Bill. Okay. Yeah. I mean, actually, you kind of started to answer it with, you know, I, I was just thinking of, um, I, I've been doing some research on AMC because it's an interesting situation. And um, just, I kind of feel bad for some of the investors because of how much the, it seems like the CEO has kind of set it up to be, I mean, I was looking at the short interest and it was like a thousand percent. And then it seems like he urgently wants to push it through um, to be able to convert the AMC units. 
And I was like, oh, that'd be con a convenient to hold a bunch of AMC, sell high, and uh, then just convert it and cover your your position. I don't know him directly or someone else, mm -hmm. but in that whole situation, I was just thinking, you know, like we wouldn't all of us here at Bed Bath and Beyond, we wouldn't have been investing in I and all of us here at Bed Bath and Beyond. You sound you sound like you fall on work there. That's great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> all like of us here at Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah, you know? yeah. We we call Michael the Plant here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like That's we, great. we wouldn't be like cheerleading, um, like Mark Triton, no offense to him. I don't know him personally, but you know, it seems like a similar situation. And so I think that, you know, AMC is on kind of a different time scale, and I, I don't know really what they can do on their own because they have a huge following, but yet like, you know, I see them buying shares, investing and even DRSing everything, but it's like, um, I just think that it's like the odds are stacked against them just because the CEO has set up things. And so I, I just wonder what kind of platform or what way people can like make a difference, even if they don't have a lot of money. I mean, like I, I watched like Kevin's interview just recently, once I found you, I was coming on the show and like, that was a great resource, but like, it just seems like there isn't like a set kind of way to even know what's going on in the market, how things work, what we can do and actually make a difference. Like how, how is it that Adam Aaron's still a CEO when, when like there's so many people that do so much due diligence on the company? Like, how is it that they haven't figured out a way to vote him out? I mean, power, right? They have buddies, you know, things like that. Right, Bill? Well, I don't want to get into the whole debate. All right. Yeah, we don't have this, to. That with regard to the people who are invested in AMC, these people, generally speaking, are allies of everything that you're trying to do that we're trying to do and the GME people. And we need to direct our efforts on the true enemy, which is the corruption, the greed, these type of things. Now, <clears throat> if this, if the executive that you're talking about ends up, you know, being in that category, then so be it. But <clears throat> I just think that right now, like, people need to be united in this whole thing and they would love nothing more than for these different communities, whether it's AMC or bed, bath and beyond or GME to hate each other. <clears throat> and I just think that, uh, you know, that's where our focus needs to be. So anything I say other than that is just going to inflame the situation. And it's just, you know, sure. Well, I'm, I'm not saying not it's, it's bad. I just like, I, I, I just think, <clears throat> It's, you know, I, I mean, and I don't know as much. And I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm just saying that I don't, if it's okay, I'd rather not comment on it because I it's just going to inflame the situation. It's like, let's keep our eye on the prize. Let's yeah. keep our eye on the fucking corrupt guys who are making, you know, $10 million a year to do nothing. And they're, they're robbing these, com these companies. Yeah. Or 24 million. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, Plur has his hand up. Yeah, Plur, uh, real quick, and then uh, and then Kevin next. Uh, I'm going like to use... jump through the screen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's just in there. Yeah. Like, go go ahead, Plur. I'm going to use the Feel bathroom like real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll be right back. You're muted. You're muted. He, sh he, sh he should be good now. He should be good. There it now. Is. All right. Test one, two, three, three, th yep. three, two, one. Check one, check two. Um, I, I love what you said about uh, essentially because people are like, you're you're a leader. It's about centralized command, or, or talking about URC, centralized command, centralized control, you know, centralized execution. But but sir, you, you said it great when you essentially said no. This should be actually decentralized command, and then decentralized execution because something like this is the only way it's going to work. Um, and and then you mentioned this whole play is you know essentially spec speculation. Uh, and then there's this fog of war that everyone keeps talking about. Um, the reason why I even bring that up at all is uh, because in terms of us as individuals, we all have our own speculation of fog of war. And we all have our individual experiences, but, but like I don't have the same experiences you do. And I don't know what you prioritize in your experiences. So a guy like me who's just trying to catch up or, or get like a quick booster shot um, in terms of like me understanding your mind. Um, I've asked ABC this question before, like what three books would you recommend? ABC recommended hundred dollar startup next five moves and hyper focus. Um, I'm just kind of curious as to you, someone who I admire, what three books would you recommend 
for me to read in uh, the next coming months. Well, first is the home that Bill Pulte built. Uh, that was a book that, uh, that that's on my uh, Twitter. It's free, um, but it chronicles a lot of the stories my grandfather and I had uh, in, in that business, which today is about an $18 billion company. So that would probably be number one. Um, you know, in terms of other books, let me think. Are you thinking in terms of business or no, really a, you, a, anything under the sun? Yes, sir, uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, General Mattis, who essentially every time he deployed, he carried a library of books with him, whether it's at war or at home. And he said himself to, to broaden your mind and read everything you can. So I'll take any recommendation to you that has meaning to you, sir. I mean, I, I kind of like uh, two books by an author. Um, and these days, he's uh, <clears throat> he's gotten kind of viral for other things, let's say. But he's he's an amazing author, in my opinion. <clears throat> Is have you ever? Excuse me. <clears throat> have you ever read God's Debris? No, I have not. That that one's definitely an eye opener. That's more of a general life book, so to speak. Um, just about probability. I, I really like it because uh, it talks about probability. And this kind of gets to ABC's question earlier. It's like, well, on what time frame will something happen? I don't know. But over enough time, the probability that something happens and this whole thing breaks, this whole system breaks, is probably high. So I really like that one. And then um, my favorite business book is Made in America by Sam Walton. Um, that is... Uh, Outside of the home that Bill Pulte built, uh, that that would be my favorite one uh, in business. But I say the God's debris because it kind of fucks with your head. It kind of shakes everything you know upside down, and and um, it gives you a good it gives you a good thought exercise. You know, I'm not into like uh, you know acid or shrooms or <laughs> DMT or anything like that. But it's probably the closest you could get to those in form of, in a form of a book. Wow. At God's debris. Sounds like a trip. I, yeah. I appreciate you saying that. Cause I, I've never done any drugs in my life. So it, I, it, it would be interesting to read about people's experiences and then medically, uh, how that's progressing into the future. And then in terms of probabilities and things of that nature, uh, and this is the last thing I'm going to say that I have even for, for you. I do think, I do think it's an honor that you're here tonight as well as it's just, a co another coincidence coincidence that uh tomorrow's that one year anniversary of rc's tweet which is july which came out july 27 2022 or it's essentially it's no better time to be alive in history than now so wow is it really it's tomorrow that's the great tomorrow. the greatest time to be alive yeah july 27 2023 wow. will be the one year anniversary tomorrow Look at that, man. We got Bill on the show, too. And also Kevin, man. Uh, Kevin has some questions uh, for uh, Bill. Uh, Kevin, take it away, man. Great. And then you mind if we just do two more? Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Of course. Just because I'm going to go see my kids. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Kevin. All right. I just want to circle back on like 30 minutes ago with Ryan Cohen and BBBY. Uh, so after my speculation that the board turned him down on his turnaround plan, Poole is saying you can't say much, but speculation, like Ryan's always got his feelers out there. He's still got his people on the boards. He's looking for opportunity. And I know he wants bye bye baby. He said it for over a year. And so they turned him down. He was like, okay, well, I'm going to keep my feelings no in here. No chance, and, and wait until it drops 98%, 99%. And Ryan's like, oh, man. You know what? I can now buy instead of a billion for $10 million. So what is the time frame? When, when, when does this all have to come out? I think it was uh, supposed to come out last week, and they canceled out the Bye Bye Baby auction. Yeah, They're supposedly like, oh, they didn't have enough qualified. Tomorrow, we need to cancel it. Yeah, they didn't have enough qualified bidders. Supposedly they're going. Come back on, to tell us, Bill. On August first, <laughs> and then thirty days of like seeing how the business goes, and then they're going to release the financials, which they would allow them to, I guess, evaluate the company. I don't really know exactly, but you know. My guess is you'd have to have an evaluation, an accurate evaluation at that point to, to move forward with it. Only the young. You don't need <laughs> Only the young. There's, 
<laughs> there's something there, man. There's something uh, in that cigar, man. Uh, uh, you Dumb know. <laughs> um, ABC, you want to ask the last question for Bill tonight? Feel free. For sure. Thanks. All right. Um, God's debris, just a quick summary, guys. What it kind of states is really that, you know, the simple answer is in front of us. And sometimes we kind of convolute it up. And it's really the debris that, you know, my question being, we are in a situation here, uh, Bill, where we're seeing a lot of division, as I was saying earlier. How would you, as us DGENs, are trying to, you know, fight the war and, and, and kind of spread the word and, and try and grow our community, obviously as individual investors, but doing due diligence together, I find that there's a lot of retort and fighting trying to outprove each other. No, this docket says this, and you're stupid for that. And, and, and how would you collectively encourage us to try and bring these communities together without that, that banter back and forth? Because ultimately, you know, GME people fell in love with GME because of what Ryan Cohen did. Obviously, Bed Bath & Beyond, we like the stock, we like the board and the people that were put in position by RC, yet there still seems to be this division. How, what words of wisdom can you leave with us that will stop the in-house fighting and I'm, what what words can you leave with us to say guys this is how i would approach it because we're having space calls with the other side with gme to lead us and i just see the banter going back and forth and there's real no solution coming out of it you just how can't engage it you know that abc i mean even your your question is wise which is you know bring in the bringing it to conscious you know, conscious level. I think the unconscious nature of the human is to fight and to, you know, uh, be against each other and these type of things. But we really are in so many ways on, uh, on the same team. So I think by leaders like you, cause you are a leader, everybody's a leader here, but you're a leader. ABC is like, by you asking that question, I think people are going to think twice about, you know, does it make sense to really fight with these people? you know, really spend our time, our energy hating on these people, or should we be focused on, you know, the real enemy, which is the corruption, the greed, the, uh, you know, what do they say? One of the seven deadly sins is sloth. You know, and I think a lot of these executives, I just think sloth. I mean, think about this. How the hell did this Fortune 500 COO Mm -hmm. that was going to become the COO of Pulte Group, okay, an $18 billion company. How the hell did he have time? How the hell did the CEO let this guy have time for a year and a half to come up with different fake identities to attack me? I mean, this stuff is That's crazy. Nuts, so, man. you know, if you traffic in this kind of stuff, it'll make you go nuts. And in this case, this guy, in my opinion, he's nuts. And... um I just say you got to restrain yourself. You really got to restrain yourself. And we've got to restrain ourselves as a movement, in my opinion, to not fight with each other. I mean, I had one friend today. He was not worried about me coming on the stream, but he's a big GME guy. And he's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, he's like the, the PP guys. They, you know, they're always beating the shit out of me, blah, blah, blah. And I said, dude, <laughs> I said, first of all, I don't know what that's all about. But second mm -hmm. of all, and I said, if you need to, I'll happy to talk to him. But he's like, but I said, I don't know what that's about. But even if it is, it's like you control yourself. It's like, why the hell are you getting triggered? Why are you letting these guys co-opt your brain? You know? Right. So ABC, I think it's a good question, my man. Excellent. Uh, you heard it from Bill, man. Bill, give us some closing thoughts, man. Uh, we got over uh, 1,800 people, a new record, man, on the I BB's think you had over show. 2, somebody said we it. did. It was like 2,300, man. It, it's, it's nuts. Uh, give us some closing thoughts, man. Um, uh, what you think people should know at home, man, the people tuning in. Now's your time to shine, Bill. Let's hear it. Well, by being on the show, I already shined because it was a pleasure to be with all of you. <laughs> we love that. Laura looks like he's going to jump through the fucking camera and choke me. <laughs> um, yeah. But you look good, Flora. You look well dressed, well postured, ready to go, good. baby. And then you got the wise ABC. Um, but no, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Good. And uh, I just leave you with only the young. Only the young, man. All right. We'd love to have you again in the future, Bill. Have I'll a fantastic. Good. It. 
Good. Have a fantastic rest of your night. Next time we'll pump it. Next time we'll get we'll get it above three thousand or something. Let's fucking do it, man. Yeah, Yeah. we'll take some shots. We'll have a good ass (laughs) night, man. Let's do it. All right. See you, boys. Take care. All right. Take care, Bill. Good night. See ya. See Bill. There you have it, man. Uh, uh, Bill Pulte, man. Holy shit.